Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to talk about T-stop definition according to Eurocode 1993 1 part 8 uh, designing of joints uh, in Eurocode. Uh, sometimes it's very complicated to understand this uh, definition of how to deal with different uh, scope to calculate the uh, maximum tension that a plate or a bolted connection can uh, resist. So in Eurocode 1993 18, uh, we are dealing with the definition of T-stop. In this video we have introduction and what items or what clauses are included in understanding that and then we will continue with the calculation of the forces according to what we learn in this video. Now let's move on. So first of all, uh, I will bring first the uh, clause for understanding this equivalent T-stop intention. In uh, clause 624, you can see the definition and in general, item 1, in bolted connections, an equivalent T-stop intention may be used to model the design resistance of the following basic components. Column flange in bending, Assume that you have a column which you have uh, one end plate connected to the flange and then it's going to be bolted with several rows. As a result, when it comes to the bending moment capacity, then each row of the bolt connected to the flange would be under tension. So that should be used for this case. End plate in bending. Uh, typically we have one uh, end plate connected directly to the beam and then it is connected to the column flange. It is also under bending in terms of being under tension. Flange cleat in bending, if you have such, again the same and base plate in bending under tension. Methods for modeling these basic components as equivalent T-stop flanges including the value to be used for some parameters, E minimum L effective and M are given in 626. The possible modes of failure of the flange of an equivalent T-stop may be assumed to be similar to those expected to occur in the basic component that it represents. And item number four, the total effective length sigma L effective of an equivalent T-stop, uh, we will see figure 62, should be such that the design resistance of its flange is equivalent to that of the basic joint component that it represents. Very important note here is that the effective length of an equivalent T-stop is a notional length and does not necessarily correspond to the physical length of the basic joint component that it represents. So it means that the values given as effective length is not necessarily the length of the failure. It's a kind of imaginary T-stop effective length. Let's go through the next clause. Number five in the same clause. The design tension resistance of a T-stop flange should be determined from table 6.2. And prying effect are implicitly taken into account when determining the design tension resistance according to table 62. Uh, uh, prying force is a kind of force that uh, the easiest way to explain is that if you have a nail inside a wall and if you want to take it out then the easiest way is using a hammer and use the claw here and then try to apply the load here. So then we can see that the tension coming to the nail to be pulled out is trying to force the end of the hammer to make a force on the wall or a compressive force on the wall. So this force is uh, known as prying force. That's a very uh, easy way to understand what prying force is. Now let's continue. In cases where prying forces may develop, the table 6.2, the design tension resistance of a T-stop, flange FTRD should be taken as the smallest value of three possible failure mode one, two, three. So we will go through the different modes in the next video to explain how it uh, should be calculated. And when prime force may not develop, then we will have only two modes 
according to table 62. Now, first let's have a look on the figure 62. So L effective or sigma L effective is the summation of L effective according to some uh, equations uh, from the other tables that you might need to use. Uh, then you assume that you have a T stop with the length of sigma L effective and the bolts are in two sides of the perpendicular part which is attached to that. Assume that we have a uh, column and you have some bolts just two for now and based on different uh, possible failure modes for example each bolt can be quite far from the other then perhaps bolts in the ultimate state might fail or they are very close and two bolts are such that they are resisting and then the failure might happen outside each bolt so we have some uh, regulations in Eurocode how to determine which which failure mode would happen and in this case you can see that if we consider only one row of the bolt just these two then they are individual row but if we consider all of bolts together then it's a group bolt considering for each case we calculate uh, L effective and then we assume that they are representing one t-stop it's completely imaginary t-stop as you can see here in figure 6-2 of Eurocode then we can see how to determine what e minimum is what m is for the welded profile and for the um, hot rolled uh, profile like hea heb or ipe uh, e minimum and m are determined and then it comes to the table 62 so in table 62 design resistance you can see we have different modes mode 1 mode 2 mode 3 and prying force may develop or no prying force so if prying force may develop you have two methods method 1 and method 2 which is alternative mode if there is no backing plates then you can use the first row if we have backing plate then we can use the first row for mode number one for mode number two we have only one equation and for mode number three we have only one equation if there is no prying force we do not have to the first two modes instead we have only one mode which is called ft12 and we have again mode three so it's uh, explanation of what we read earlier then in this table we have some notes Mode 1, complete yielding of the flange. Mode 2, bolt failure with yielding of the flange. Mode 3, bolt failure. LB is the bolt elongation and LB star is a kind of reference or threshold that you can calculate. Uh, notice that there is always some kind of modification version of Eurocode and take a look on those if you are using uh, if you are using the code to calculate there are some corrections coming or modifications here you can see that i put from the uh, modification version that okay it should be modified in a way and we have the parameter n we will go through this uh, in the next video to explain what it is then we have FTRD, design resistance, design tension resistance for a bolt uh, given in table 3-4 of the same code. Sigma L effective 1 is the value of sigma L effective for mode 1. Uh, similarly, sigma L effective 2. And note 1, it's very important. In bolted beam to column joints or beam splices, it may be assumed that prime forces will develop. So if you have a... Uh, I beam to I beam connection bol with bolts you can assume that prying force may develop if you have a end plate connected to the column flange uh, we assume that the prying force may assume and the uh, check LB less than LB star is not needed to be checked but for example if we have a end plate connected to the foundation perhaps that's uh, relevant to calculate LB and LB star so in the table we have FTRD, FTRD as written here is uh, the design tension resistance of a bolt according to table 3-4. Let's have this 
table here to see what it is. So FTRD is K2 times FU bolt, the ultimate uh, resistance or tensile resistance of the bolt, times AS, which is stress area of the bolt, and gamma M2 as partial factor. Gamma M2 is 1.25 according to uh, 1993-11, and K2 is given to be 0 0.9 for structural bolts, uh, 0 0.63 for countersunk bolts, which may not be very common or used for the uh, structures. If uh, you want to find out the stress area of a bolt, then uh, you can just Google and find out uh, some reliable sources. Here is one case that you can see uh, from this engineeringtoolbox.com. Uh, nominal stress area is given for each thread it depends on the thread if it is coarse or fine and this is for the coarse one if if you calculate m16 as the diameter of or nominal diameter is 16 millimeter the area will be 201 square millimeter but uh, the tensile area or the tension area or stress area is considering the effect of the uh, pitch and also thread area as a result the nominal stress area is uh, less than the nominal area uh, proof load meaning the ultimate uh, value of of the, the design proof load proof load is the almost the same as uh, given in table 3 4 but you can calculate easily by as and fu and also gamma m2 the other thing that we need to know about the T-stop and how to go through is the individual bolt rows, bolt groups, and group of bolt rows. So here are some clauses that you might need to read it in advance, but uh, those which are important I highlighted here. In item number three, when using the, the T-stop approach to model a group of bolt rows, the following conditions should be satisfied. The force at each bolt row should not exceed the design resistance determined considering only the individual bolt row. The total force on each group of bolt, of bolt rows comparing two or more adjacent bolt rows within the same bolt group should not exceed the design resistance of the group of bolt rows. It means that you need to calculate all the groups and also individually and check one by one which is uh, uh, the dominant it means that which one would fail first, individual row or the group together. When determining the design tension, tension resistance of a basic component represented by an equivalent T-stop flange, the following parameters should be calculated. The design resistance of an individual bolt row determined considering only that bolt row, the contribution of each bolt row to the design resistance of two or more adjacent bolt rows within a bolt group determined considering only those bolt rows. It means that when we are going to calculate the capacity of a group of bolts, we go row by row, calculate each one the capacity, and then we calculate, for example, uh, two rows together to see what would be the maximum resistance of those two bolt rows and then we consider if we have more for example one two and three let's have a just short a sketch for what needs to be done if this is our case representing the web from the column so uh usually it starts from the top to bottom to numbering the rows so this will be row number one then row number two, row number three. So first we calculate uh, row number one, the tension resistance, and then row number two, row number three, and then one and two together, two and three together, and one and two and three together. So in the case of an individual bolt row, uh, sigma L effective should be taken as equal to the effective length L effective tabulated in 626 for that bolt row taken as individual bolt row. Uh, in all the tables, we see sigma L effective. But if you are just talking for one individual row, then sigma L effective will become 
L effect. Then after that, what we have, for example, if we are talking about a column flange to be under tension due to bolt connection, then the column flange will be in transverse bending. And then uh, clause 6264 applies to this case. Uh, then 62641 represents the unstiffened column flange bolted connections, the design resistance and failure mode of an unstiffened column flange in transverse bending together with the associated bolt intention should be taken as similar to those of an equivalent T-stop flange. Uh, then we can see 624 we went through right now. Each individual bolt row required to resist tension each group of bolt rows required to resist tension. Then in figure 6.8, we have the definition of E minimum, M, and so forth. The effective length of equivalent T stop should be determined for the individual bolt rows and the bolt group in accordance with 6.242 from the values given for each bolt in table 6.4. So you see that it might be very complicated if you want just to go through the code and read one by one. Uh, in Eurocode, it's always referring from this code to the other, sometimes to the other code even. Then uh, it might be hard sometimes to follow. Uh, figure 6.8, definition of E and E minimum. For example, here you can see that if we have a hot roll section, then M is representing from the center of the hole of the bolt towards the root uh, in the distance of 80% of the root uh, radius. And E is from the center to the flange edge. And E minimum depends on what kind of section or what kind of plate is connected to this flange. The next one is the determination of effective length uh, this is about column flange in transverse bending. It can be the end plate in transverse bending or in bending in general. So that's another clause that you need to check. For this example or for this uh, explanation, I selected this table, but there is another table that uh, in rigid calculation video that I plan to record later, you will see the uh, difference what kind of uh, parameters are representing. So here, effective length for an unstiffened column flange, table 6.4, bolt row location, inner bolt row, end bolt row, mode 1, mode 2, representing those two modes. Coming back to the other table we went through. And bolt row considered individually, as we know now, uh, we have to consider one time each rows. And then we need to consider the group of bolts. So the first in the left is representing bolt row considered individually. And then we have bolt row considered as part of a group of bolt rows. Then we have two types of failures. It can be a kind of a circular pattern. So let's have a look. If, if we are looking at the section from the plan view assume that we have only two bolts representing one row so l effective uh, circular pattern represents that the failure or the yielding can happen this way it means that your bolt is placed far from the edge as a result when it's going to be under tension the failure cannot cannot extend to the edge of the flange but if we have, for example, bolts very close to the edge, then instead of a circular pattern, the failure might happen this way. So this is called non-circular pattern. We have two options here. First, we calculate circular pattern as L effective CP and then non-circular patterns L effective NC, each one with uh, different parameters. The other case is selecting which bolt row we are talking about. For example, is it an inner bolt row or is it end bolt row? Here in this table, we have the parameter of E1 that you can see that it is not explained in this example, in this illustrative uh, graph. If we come to figure 9694 also, here we can see that we have P 
E, we have M and we have E modeling a stiffened column flange as separate T stop. Number one, end bolt row adjacent to a stiffener. Number two, end bolt row. Number three, inner bolt row. Number four, bolt row adjacent to a stiffener. And P is the vertical distance in the direction of column or beam. So if we come back here, we can see that E1 is not explained or shown in the graph. But if you go to the modification version, you can find it that in paragraph 3, table 64, add a row at the bottom of the table containing the following paragraph. E1 is the distance from the center of the fastener in the end row to the adjacent free end of the column flange measured in the direction of the axis of the column profile. See row 1 and row 2 in figure 6-9. If we come to row 1 and row 2, so uh, it is good if in your notes you just sketch something like that that this is e1 e1 represents the distance of the end row to the edge of the element something that is really important in this case if we are talking about uh, inner bolt row or end bolt row it depends uh, the position of those bolts assume that you have a line column and and your bolts are going to be far from the end so this is E1 and you can see that always we are looking for minimum L effective. Here you can see that the S smaller of 2 pi M, M pi M plus 2 E1, the S smaller of these two. So it means that if you have even end bolts quite far from the uh, edge of the column or the element, then you might consider this one as inner bolt row. This is the only item that it is uh, important to be explained when it comes to group of bolts indeed it is considered as the end uh, row because here this is not inner it will be uh, considered as end bolt row but e1 might not be applied then you just ignore these two values we will come to this in the example that i prepared for the uh, rigid connection capacity calculation later on Yes, that was the end of this video. In this video, we went through the introduction and explaining how the T-stop should be considered. Just explanation, nothing to calculate. In the next video, I will explain about the different modes, mode 1, 2, 3, and how to calculate the given equations in the tables in Eurocode, uh, 1993, 1, part 8. See you then. Thank you for watching. Bye.